I just want to introduce Robert Ruiz. Quickly, uh, he's been a Mozilla contributor since the last millennium, and he's been speaking in the Mozilla room in all four stands except one. He's a fan of Star Trek, st space exploration, science, Linux, and other uh, open source software, American football, and country music. Please uh, welcome Robert. Hi everyone. Uh, did you want to say something? Okay. Uh, hi everyone. Um, as Alex said, I'm Robert Kaiser, uh, mostly called Cairo. I'm talking about web logins after Persona, or how I solved the problem, at least on my small websites. So, one question for for the room here: Who in here does not know Persona? Okay, there are a few. So I'll give a quick recap. Um, what, <laughs> which persona is a good question because Mozilla used persona for multiple things. But uh, the persona login uh, solution was an identity or login solution by, operated by Mozilla. It ran from 2011 until the end of 2016. Turned off now. That's why I had to find a solution. It's a decentralized solution or it was a decentralized solution uh, or a federated solution, which had a central fallback to a central uh, login provider at Mozilla. You could use multiple identities. That means you could have uh, some different identities stored in the system, and you could log into websites using those different identities. As identities, we used email addresses, so it was verified email. The persona service verified that the email belongs to you and then it sends this email as your identification to the, uh, the web server. It had some potential for browser integration even though that was never done. And the browser ID protocol that it used was uh, easy to implement for website, provider, uh, website operators. And it was permissionless, so websites implementing it did not need to actually ask for permission to use it. There's more information about the background uh, on, on François Marie's blog, uh, of Feeding Cloud, Geek, and C. I, I linked it in the, in the slides. I, I didn't say that in the beginning. You saw the URL of the slides in the beginning. It's on slides.cairo, with a K, dot at. Uh, just the first entry there, FOSTEM 2017. Uh, so you can actually find that and click all the links. Uh, afterwards as well. So, Persona was going away. Uh, so, a small website, if it needs some administration or, or some dynamic component dependent on users, which I had as a, I'm, I was writing a content management system or I'm operating a content management system and some other websites that have state that needs to be edited. And so, you need to log in for that. What do you need as a small website? It needs to be easy to implement as a website operator. You need to have to trust the identification that you get from those logins. You really want to avoid dealing with storing passwords because every, everything can go wrong there. My old system stored passwords basically as plain text and sent them as plain text via email to users. So basically all the mistakes you should never do. Uh, you really don't want to care about how to store passwords yourself. You want to have some solution that's proven to, to work. And that's upgradable, uh, by the way, if newer standards uh, come out for that. You don't want to, to be locked in. Uh, that's, so if one authentication or identification provider goes away, you want to be able to still communicate with your users and switch to something else. The good thing with Persona was, as it used email for, for identification to the websites, you still had this email that you can use to communicate to users. And a lot of other login systems use emails as well, so you, you can actually identify the same user by, uh, by coming to you with the same email even through a different uh, login system. And ideally you want privacy. 
Ideally, you don't want to, to tell some third party who is logging into your websites when, because uh, the, then they can watch basically everything that's happening on, on your website. So you really want to, to avoid that if possible. So what, what solutions do we have? I, I started to think, what, what can I do for, for my websites? Basically two, two things. I can do everything locally inside my website system, or I can have it done externally. For doing it locally, it sounds easy to implement, but as I said, you want to, to avoid storing passwords. You, you need to find out how to communicate some verification codes to users and things like that. The devil is in the details there. It sounds easy to just have a password and username, but it, the devil comes in the details. Uh, the good thing with the local system is it can always be trusted, because uh, as a website operator, you probably have to trust yourself anyhow. And the bad thing is, as I said, it needs to secure passwords. You need to care about that yourself, write code for that yourself, and that's error prone. And uh, potentially hackable if you don't care what you're do uh, exactly what you're doing. The external providers have the potential for login. As I said, uh, you may need to use that provider for the rest of the life of your website. If you don't, don't have any uh, identificator of your users uh, that you can use to communicate directly with them. There's potential privacy issues, as I said, you're, you're telling those external providers when people are logging in. And the implementation difficulty is, is, is different depending on what you use. It could be very easy if they provide even some code on, on how you handle it. It could be very difficult if the, if the API to use it is, is very difficult. So, which external providers do we have? Locally is pretty easy, I have to write the code myself. Which, which external ones do we have? So Mozilla, Mozilla Persona has gone away. Firefox accounts sounds nice, but is not usable for anyone outside of Mozilla. So it, it falls out of that uh, as well. So you end up with a number of, of the players you probably know from some websites like Facebook, Google, GitHub, and so on. You see a collection of icons up there a lot of people call that the NASCAR login because it, uh, it looks like the NASCAR logo you see there uh, with, with all those different colors. So that's maybe having all those buttons up is probably not the right solution as well. There's a number of other OAuth 2 providers or OpenID Connect providers. Uh, OpenID Connect is a standard for, for logins that's based on OAuth 2, which is a, an authentication protocol that's pretty common now. And there's also uh, older providers or, or standards like Wealth One, like uh, a number of smaller ones that, that didn't take off that much. But mainly you, nowadays you see Auth2 and, and OpenID Connect. And of course, there's the potential uh, of intermediates. I'm just mentioning those because Mozilla is using uh, Auth0 for some things it's, that's an intermediate. It provides you all the code for, for handling the, the login from your site to them, and then they are talking to, actual, to the actual authentication providers, uh, and you can pretty easily configure that. It runs on a pro proprietary server of theirs, so it's not really the thing I want to, to advertise on an open source conference, but uh, it's, it's something you can use. But for a small web website, you may, may be able to, to use something different. And I didn't want to use a proprietary middleman. Small interlude as one external provider or one external system that does not exist yet but is in the works. So it's a future alternative. It may deactivate the auto distract of, uh, of persona. Uh, it uses email authentication. It's decentralized uh, with a fallback that's not centralized, but it uses passwordless email login. It's speaking OID, uh, Open ID Connect to both the client side and the, what they call brokers, the identity providers on 
the different domains out there. And they call it a spiritual successor to Mozilla Persona. There's a number of people who actually worked on Persona, working on Portier as well. And it's still in, in development, in early beta. You can find more information at portier.github.io. There will be an interesting alternative once they, they are in a stable mode, but we're not there yet. And I needed something for my websites right now. So I figured doing everything locally in the website is maybe not the best solution, but I don't trust those exter big external providers too much and I want privacy from them. So what can I do there? Well, I may be able to just implement the same thing as for an external provider on in my website and then basically with the same protocols talk to something that I still host locally, but at least I have everything encapsulated there and I call that a local external uh, or self-hosted external uh, alternative. It, this gives me the full control over the login stack uh, as it all runs on, on my machines. The password security, it, I still need to care about it, but it's at least isolated from the website code and it, it's code that's hopefully reusable and that other people can look, look into if it's an open source thing and, and we can guarantee that it's a good solution. Management of multiple identities is possible if, if I, I write it that way. Privacy and trust are no issues because I, I don't need privacy from myself. I already know who logs into my website, so I'm not telling that to anyone else. And I hopefully, as I said before, can trust myself. And when I'm using a standard API, like OS2 or OpenID Connect, there's a good possibility if I find out that's not the solution I want in the long run, I can switch it out to some other solution that uses the same protocols because I already have the code for that in the, in the website. The downside is I still need to secure the whole system and the passwords properly. But I thought uh, there's good documentation how, how you should do that. I can probably look into that. And there's libraries already there for handling OAuth 2. So I, I know PHP, I thought, well, there's libraries for OS2, let's, let's do something with this, and I created the PHP auth server. It's using OS, the OS2 API via this library, via OS2 server PHP. It can be ex extended to OpenID Connect, I didn't do that yet. Uh, the password storage right now happens with the PHP standard password hash function, which uses bcrypt, which is good enough if used with enough iterations, but there's better algorithms out there. There's a bug report out there on the uh, PHP bug, bug tracker to actually use something better. I, the, we're trying to use sCrypt, uh, but now if there's an even better algorithm that, that they propose to use. The good thing is, once they have a better algorithm in, in, in PHP, the code is in there to automatically update uh, the security for everyone on login, because on login they tell you the password you can re-encrypt with, with a better function. I'm also using a nonce there that's stored on disk uh, and extends the, the, the password of the user. So if someone get, uh, gets the database, they can not do brute force hacking of, of those passwords easily enough because the nonce on disk is needed as well. It's relatively easy to install on a, a LAMP system, as they called it for a long time, Linux with Apache Mask, KL, PHP, up to PHP 7, which I'm losing, using on my local systems when testing it. My server still uh, runs it on PHP 5, but it breaks with both. I'm using Doctrine database extraction layer for, for the data, database extraction, not all of Doctrine, but just the database extraction layer. Uh, so it should be pretty easily extendable to other databases. 
it, the PHP utility classes are something I did myself and uh, put on GitHub some time ago. That I'm just using that for email and, and DOM document abstraction. It's because I'm building every HTML document I'm putting out there as a DOM document and only serializing it then, which makes it much easier to not forget and tags and stuff like that. Uh, it's scalable to brand the installation for the operator. Mine is branded like, like you see in the picture up there with, with my logo, but it c comes with a neutral one by default. And my installation at auth.kyro.at scores pretty well on the security tests I could run on Mozilla Observatory, on SSL labs. Some of that is because of the code, some of that is because of the PHP config configuration, uh, the Apache configuration, which I have examples in the, in the repository for, so you can just copy from that if you want to use it. So, current status, uh, oh, that, that runs off the screen, because I thought it would be f uh, three by four and it's, it's not. Current status is I only support the uh, authentic authorization code flow of Auth2 right now, which means the website sends a request for, for authentication, then you log in there, uh, and, and for, for normal login, it implicitly grants it if you log in, uh, and it sends back a reply with, with an access code to the website. On the server side, you you request a token for, for that uh, access code, and with that token, you can then do something. Most importantly, get the email of the user uh, so you have a user identificator. The client credentials flow, which is a bit less secure and doesn't have the this flow over the server in there, but that makes it less secure because it only works between browser and, uh, and authentication server. That is not supported yet, but the library can do it, so it should be easy to add. The OpenID Connect stuff is also supported by the library, so it's just a question of adding it. I only tested with uh, Apache and MySQL, or actually MariaDB uh, for now. Uh, the, it should be easy to extend that for other web servers and, and databases as long as they're supported by the doctrine abstraction layer and you can run PHP on them. There's rudimentary documentation in the main readme. It supports US English and, and German as defined by your browser because that's the two languages I know of or that I know how to, to uh, write in. Testing is, is right now very rudimentary. It's just I'm trying it with my own document management system and I'm trying it with a secondary system I'm, uh, I'm running that has an independent uh, implementation. I want to give special thanks to Christoph Zauner who did a review for security issues and he didn't find uh, any real security issues. He had a few minor comments that few of them still need to address but uh, most of them was nothing special. And the thing that's cut off here is probably the most important thing of this whole slide. It's open sourced. It's available since today, since a few hours ago, at github.com slash Cairo AT slash auth server. It's under Mozilla Public License 2. I care to put a license on my projects, uh, unlike many others on, on GitHub. And yeah, it's, it's out there right now if, uh, if you want to use something like that. It's an open source project, so it needs help. By the way, this uh, on the right there is the unbranded version you see by, by default. It's uh, the, the login piece of it. The, my logo is not in there. It's somewhere in the repository because I started it. Uh, without being able to, to skin it. What needs help there is implementation of especially OpenID Connect. Uh, maybe the client credential flow as well. A test suite and infrastructure to run the tests. More complete documentation. 
more UI languages uh, would be nice, but those are, upper three are probably more important than that. Uh, but they're, they're still a good thing. It's standard PO files, so it's easy easy to do the translations. More installations out there that actually try it and, and see how things are working. And of course, any of your ideas and pull requests for it are would be very, very appreciated. That said, uh, I think we we should have time for some questions. Uh, the URL on, on GitHub is here again, and if you want to contact me, that's my email address and my Mozilla's URL that actually has the few social networks I'm I'm on. It, it has the links for that. And with that, are there any questions? Yeah. Provider, right? Yeah. And then it would also be possible to include a Hello JS module. Would you know of? Uh, what? Do you know Hello JS? Uh, I don't know Hello JS. So the question was if I'm basically running my own OS2 provider with that. Yes. This this is an implementation of an OS2 provider. Somewhat incomplete because it doesn't have the client credentials flow. It only has the authorization code flow. But yes, it is one. Uh, you say the Hello JS. Yeah. Uh, of if it. It's, it's just a. a I, I don't know of it. A so. A JavaScript library that includes almost all the open out providers. Okay, so it's something that provides this this wall of, of icons, <laughs> or it can provide it. <laughs> so it's a provider of of OS two providers for for websites. So we I yeah. I didn't do anything like that right now. Uh, the thought behind this is for for people to set up their own thi uh, their own provider there. So I don't want my provider to be uh, one that a lot of other people are using. I prefer other people actually using the same module and running their own for for their purposes and not telling anyone else who's logging in uh, on their website. But using some common code that can be made secure enough. Yeah. Uh, do you think there's any chance for Mozilla to use uh, Portier for their services like they used Persona before? So the question is if, if there's any chance for Mozilla to use Portier. I'm not sure. You would need to ask those people at Mozilla who are implementing sites that, that are using logins. I think Mozilla probably likes the idea of Portier, or a lot of people at Mozilla. Mozilla doesn't have one opinion usually, it's a lot of people. But I think a lot of people like the idea, but we will see where it goes when, when it matures more. Right now it's, it's in, in a very early testing mode. But I like the idea as well, of course. Any other questions? Oh, sure. One of the advantages of Persona was that you could log in once and then be logged into a number of websites, federated login, right? Mm -hmm. Single sign-on. Do you think that that goal today is incompatible with the other requirement that you had for not telling some big company whenever you log in somewhere? Do you think at the moment you can't have both of those things? So the question is, Persona basically acted as a single sign-on solution. Uh, you could log into Persona once and then are logged into a number of, uh, of other websites. And if I think that approach does not work right now without telling or, or with that concern of privacy against those big companies, I think with the current protocols, it doesn't work because you're, te you're telling them the OAuth2 protocol and OpenID Connect protocol require you to send a request on every login. So you basically have this centralized knowledge of where you log in uh, anytime. There's a potential that we find a protocol where that, that, that's not the case. With the current protocols, we're not there. And so if you don't want that, you probably need to look at something on, on your own side, unfortunately. 
the also ID had some, some ideas or the protocol that, that Persona used had some, some chance to not tell someone every time you log in, but uh, unfortunately it didn't get enough usage. Uh, thank you. We're running okay. out of time for questions. Uh, please give a big round of applause for Robert. Thank you.